Hey, what's going on? JJ Yost here. We are right now live in Denver, Colorado at the Denver Science Museum. It's the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And we're going to be checking out an extreme mammal exhibition. You heard it right. So in case you guys might have never seen some of these mammals before, you're going to see something that might blow your mind away. I know it's already blown mine away, and I have only seen a fraction of what this place has to offer. For those that are just tuning in right now, this is a live show, which means that you guys out there at home can ask whatever questions you might have, ha provide whatever jokes or comments, and let's have fun. This is a fun live show. I'm going to check in here. I got the phone. Oh. <laughs> Okay, hold on. We're, we're getting the password put in the phone so I can actually see the comments that you guys have to offer here. So I have an iPhone right here, and we're going to check to make sure that this is working so I can hear all of your guys' beautiful comments. And it does work, so great. Tinger, what's going on? I love seeing you, Tinger. You're always great to see. Tinger is a food blogger out of Los Angeles, and she has her own show on Facet Travel as well, so thanks for tuning in. And all right, guys, so are we ready to check out extreme mammals? I know I am. First, we've got to find our tour guide. Okay, so as you can see, the beautiful sign here. This is going to go till January 8th. Extreme mammals, all sorts of mammals. Let's uh, go inside. Oh, hi there. Hello. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm a little nervous. This is my first time in this extreme mammal exhibition. Okay, it says pull to enter, of course. I'm uh, pushing to enter here. Wow, look at that. If you didn't know, these are all mammals here. This is a tiger that's currently alive today. I do not know what this is. I wonder if it's even alive today. But that's a bat, and I heard something really fascinating about bats. There's 1,200 of species of them in existence right now. Okay, we gotta find our tour guide though. Where did she go? Oh my God, look at that. This thing is huge. Are you kidding me? This is an actual mammal? Hey, hey. How's it going? Good, oh, this is the tour guide I was looking for. Hi. What's up, Hi. Neha? Nothing, just hanging out by this Indracotherium, the largest land animal that ever lived. So this is real? This I mean, is real. This isn't real though, right? This isn't real, no. Okay. But this you is made this. <laughs> yes. I wish that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, this Indicotherium is actually a prehistoric mammal, so it lived about 34 million years ago in the Asian area. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this looks like one of those creatures they had on Star Wars. Maybe this is what what inspired them to make some of the robots they did. Maybe. Maybe. Absolutely. Like this. Uh, this ant mammal actually was uh, is. 15 feet tall here, but could have been about 18 feet this tall. This is only 15 tall? You this tall? is only 15, Jeez. only, yes. No, but I mean, that, because when you, when you hear about that some of the dinosaurs were 50 to 70 feet tall, and this is only 15, I can't even imagine being next to a dinosaur then. Absolutely. It would be pretty crazy, I would imagine. Okay, so guys, I want you guys to get a real big look at this yes. creature here, because it's huge. So... Take our height here. You can see how, how tall we are relative to this thing. Yes. And wow. Yeah. It's incredible. And it could weigh up to 30 tons, which is like mind-blowing. 30 tons. So that's 60,000 pounds? Yep. Exactly. <sighs> wow. Okay. So I don't even... Yeah, this is definitely mind-boggling. This is the first time I've ever seen this today. First time I ever even knew this existed. And... Can you imagine being right up and close with this thing? I, I couldn't. I think in the plains of Asia, it would have been had a lot more space than it would here in Denver. Um, but I think it is, it's incredible to think back to that time and what it might have looked like and see these things roaming the earth. Now, in terms of danger, like if I was to uh, get myself stuck under this, would that have, and I don't know, that would have probably been bad, huh? Yeah. Worse than a car hitting you. That would be way worse. I mean, 30 tons of weight coming down on you is, is a lot of animal to be squashing you. What, what car weighs 30 tons? What car? I don't think a car weighs 30 tons, but I can tell you that this is probably the weight of between 20 to 30 elephants, if that gives you better context. 
Wow, 20 to 30 elephants. Do you guys hear that right? Let's see here. We're going to check in here. We've got some more feeds. We've got Lori tuning in. Say hi to Lori. And we have Tinger here. And Tinger asks, is this going to be like the Smithsonian? Is the Denver Museum of Nature and Science going to be like the Smithsonian? <laughs> I've never been there, so I don't know. You know what? I think there are so many incredible museums, but I'm particularly proud to be a part of the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. So we shout out to the Smithsonian, but we love our spot. Yeah, this looks great to me. Okay. All right, so it says here there was no sound when you posted the post on your page. Oh, okay. But there's sound now, right? Yeah, so... Okay, so we're going to check out, what are we checking out next? Yeah, so I wanted to bring you over to one of my favorite extreme mammals, um, which is the platypus, which we'll walk over there right now. And I know a lot of people know a little bit about, about the platypus, one of the extremes being that they lay eggs. So let's go check it out. Okay. Do it. Alan, do you want to check on your phone to see if there's sound too? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, Tinger. Well, let us know, Tinger, what you want to see while we're here, because there's going to be a lot of cool things that we're about to see. All right, we're going to see some platypus. That's the first thing. All righty. So right over here are uh, egg-laying mammals, and uh, one of them is notably the platypus, uh, kind of one of those species you think of when you think of, oh, all mammals lay eggs. Well, that's not true necessarily, and the platypus tells us um, that that's not true. The echidna is another example of that, um, and there's a way to kind of see what what the reproduction is through different types of mammals, and yeah. the platypus is most notable. Now, okay, so if laying eggs, you can still be a mammal, what makes you a mammal? Well, so what we have to remember is that this is extreme mammals, and extreme is everything that differs from the norm. So a leg ang mammal is different than the normal traits of a mammal, which are um, warm-blooded, they have hair or fur, they're air-breathing, they give live birth, and they drink mom's milk. Are humans extreme mammals? Humans are absolutely extreme mammals. We have big brains. We're the smartest ones out there. We have opposable thumbs. Um, and we have the ability to use tools, which, again, other mammals have that ability as well. But um, that's what makes us extreme. That's what differs us from the norm. Okay. All right. So I'm an extreme mammal. Can you believe that? And you are too. Yes, we if all you, are. If, if you're human. I'm or, totally Or if I'm human. <laughs> Never know these days. Okay. Wow. What is this? This is the uh, Irish elk. Um, this is the uh, mammal that we are really excited to add to the collections. So we have about a 1.4 million collection items here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And we decided we wanted to add a little something to this exhibition that was traveling here. So we added this huge Irish elk skull. Is this a real picture of an, uh, I mean, because you said they haven't been around since the 1930s. Yeah, that was the, when they found fossils was in the 1930s. They oh, actually oh, So they, this hasn't been around for a long time. This hasn't been around for about 7,000 years. Oh, and I thought it was just yeah. 70 years ago. <laughs> okay, wow. Well, this is actually a computer-generated photo of what an Irish elk would look like. And right over here, we've got the skull. Oh, boy. You guys ready for the skulls? Woo! Look at that. That's definitely a, a wall trophy. <laughs> yeah, so what's really incredible about the Irish elk skull is obviously its size. That's what makes it extreme. And our particular uh, skull, the antlers span about six and a half feet across. So the whole hum a whole human uh, above average size could lay across the antlers. Okay, now it says antler width is up to 50. 14 feet. Does that mean they get even bigger than this? Absolutely. So this is how, only six feet? Yeah, this is about six and a half feet. So there's one that's 14 feet? That did exist at one point, yes. Jesus, <laughs> you guys hear that? 14 feet. This is only six feet. Can you imagine that's three times the, or at least two and a half times? Wow. Now, how much does this one weigh? Could, it, could we just pick it up? Like, how much would it weigh? Oh, goodness. It would probably... No, we could not just pick it up. Don't I, so. I don't think, like... Even the strongest human could pick up an animal like this. I'm sure. Well, just the, just the head. I'm sure the head and the and the antlers alone would be, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred uh, pounds, a couple hundred pounds. Okay. For sure. Do you know how much a human head weighs? 
Is it eight pounds? Oh, she knows. <laughs> Great. I, I was going to guess that too. So, so yeah, this is the antler from an Irish elk. So if it's called an Irish elk, does that mean it's from Ireland? Yes, it was found in Ireland um, mainly. So, yep, Irish elk, totally in its name, found in Ireland. Oh, all right, guys, what do you guys want to see next? Well, we got some more comments here. Let's see. Lo okay. So Tinger wants us to show us her an animal. We did. How long does it take to grow those horns? <laughs> I would imagine uh, that it would take into adulthood for these animals. And not knowing how long exactly that they live, um, I'd guess years and years for, for an animal to get their antlers to be up to 14 feet long. Wow. Okay. All right. What's next? Let's check out another animal. <laughs> wow. So there, all sides here, you guys, you can see just the skulls of these massive creatures. It's, it's, and these aren't dinosaurs. These are mammals, believe it or not. I'm surprised. I'm so, you guys must be so thankful that you have these fossils. <laughs> these are pretty incredible. I mean, where do you find these in your backyard? I mean, for some of them, you can. If you notice, the Colorado flag is indicating when some of these mammals either lived here or currently live here. So for some of us, yeah, in our backyards. But for a lot of these mammals, they are found all over the world, which is how we know they exist. So we have one right here. This is a Colorado mammal. So imagine finding one of these skulls in your backyard. That looks like a dinosaur. But what is this? If we look here, what is number five? It's a mega, can you pronounce, mega, mega syrups. syrups. Okay, so that's like a rhinoceros. It kind of looks, yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good way to describe it. It definitely has that um, really recognizable horn. Although the rhinoceros we know and can see at zoos today, um, this one lived about 35 million years ago. So really uh, very different than the rhinoceros that lived today. Okay, so. Even the oldest human today probably hasn't seen this alive, right? Maybe, <laughs> unless they have a time machine. Exactly. Okay. So, oh, my God. Okay. So this looks like another Star Wars-inspired creature. Something maybe out of Dr. Seuss, definitely. Um, this is a macrochenia. Um, this is a camel-like animal that actually has a nose similar to an elephant. Uh, and these animals, they lived about 10,000 years ago in South America. 10,000. So, okay, that's way sooner than 35 million years ago. Absolutely, yeah. Recently is so relative, right? right. So compared to that hornless or that uh, rhinoceros we just saw, uh, definitely recently. Um, they were discovered in South America. So. Now, was this another one that you might have created before? Did you create this yourself? I mean, is this a real replica or how did they, how, is this real, fake? What, am I, what are we looking at right now? Is this real hair? This is a replica, absolutely. Um, so all of these, uh, many of these uh, p different collection pieces um, came from the American Museum of Natural History. And um, they put together extreme mammals and were super excited to host it here. Um, but then we added things like the Irish elk to just kind of make it more our own, make it more DMNS. Yeah. yeah all right. I like it. Okay. So far, so good. And, and here's another picture just for people that want to check this out. This is what they might have looked like computer generated. So a little cool picture here. Yeah, it's a real cool museum. It has a lot of things that uh, you might not see outside. <laughs> I mean, I definitely don't see these things outside. <laughs> oh, were we going to check out this over here? There's, so, there's just so much here that it's like I want everyone to see all the different uh, creatures that might have existed. Yeah, so one of my favorites um, is the babarusa, and the babarusa is a, a pig-like animal that still currently lives today, um, and it has a horn that grows from kind of inside of its mouth all the way up into the flesh of its head, and uh, it's there mainly to kind of attract the ladies, um, but, uh, but other than that, I don't really know if that'd be useful. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm like, oh, that's probably not appropriate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what, this one's actually in existence today. Yes. So we're, we're actually seeing one that is alive today. I'll be, all these extinct ant mammals, but this one you can actually find in Indonesia. And it looks like something I would see in Papua New Guinea, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Southeast Asia is, is where you'd find some of the babarusas today. Absolutely. Wow. 
And now, is that a flying deer up there? Is that what, <laughs> why, it's, why it's way up in that in the air? That's actually um, the skull and antlers of a moose. We've got it displayed that way just so we can make sure that everyone's seeing everything they uh, need to see in the exhibition. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what is next? So I want to skip ahead and, uh, and pass kind of some of these awesome skulls um, t behind us and jump over to the glyptodont, which is an animal from the Ice Age that has this carapace that is kind of like a, similar to a turtle shell, but not really when you take a look at it. Um, but this is a notable mammal, um, again, from the Ice Age, um, because they uh, could have grown up to the size of like a car, and they're actually relative to our modern day armadillos. Okay, so this was a armadillo, like a, a relative. relative. Yeah. Now, if you guys want to take a zoom in on this, this is pretty big. Uh, I could make a little house out of this. <laughs> Do I, if I just hollow it in? Is it hollow inside? Maybe we can. Okay, if you want to try to be a glyptodon? I think that would be <laughs> how, so awesome. how could I? Oh, you can. I could even. Here. Oh, it's. So I even have a. Oh, yes. all right. This was unplanned, so I don't know. <laughs> If I'm going to do it. this, okay. You can make it. I'll hold right. this for you. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> so, where's my head? So, I got my little cave here. So, what I like about this is um, if I ever get scared or shy, I can just hide in my shell. <laughs> and no one, <laughs> no one can tell. This is a perfect, uh, perfect shell for people that uh, might not like crowds of people if they ever would just want to get away you just want to hide from life and escape then you always have uh, protection to just crawl right into okay so um wow this is definitely oh, no i mean you could get used to this probably be a lot to move around with though huh <laughs> oh my god okay so that's great i love this uh, i might take one of these <laughs> Home with me. <laughs> okay, we still got some more comments here. Uh, Michael says, very cool. Tinger wants to know, what do you think this animal ate? I don't even know what animal she's referring to. Tinger, what animal were you referring to? And, oh, Lori says, that could be a house for my cat. <laughs> yeah, that, you're right. That could be a cool like cat house. Absolutely. Okay, what's next? Check, let's check out the... Uh, Woo! Makeover space. Mammal makeover. You guys ready for some makeovers at home? <laughs> All right. Awesome. So this is a space we created um, just to help our guests learn through play. Um, so there's three different kind of pieces to it uh, where guests can come and they can be their own extreme mammals. They can even make up their own extreme mammals. So using tails and fins, different headgear like we saw with the Irish elk, and um, different hands and feet. People can dress up and play and learn um, what mammals are and what makes them extreme. All right, you guys ready for some dress up at home? If you guys have your costumes from Halloween still in the closets or out, take them out right now because we're going to do some dress up. So what's our, what are we, we going to do? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's start over here with the tails and fins. I saw one okay. being popped in here. So we're going to be some ocean animals right now? Uh, this right here is oh. a bat. Oh. Well, you already have the black, so you're. It's already. So you're. You're already. She she pre-planned her outfit for this extreme mammal costume here. Right, Perfect. We got Batwoman here. I love it. Okay. Well. All right. Okay. So. What do you guys think? Want to be bison? Is there anything else I put on as well? Um, you can put on a kangaroo tail. Okay, so I'm going to be like a multi, multiple animal here. Yeah, here, I can hold that stuff if you want. Okay. Oh, it, it might be child size right now. <laughs> Perfect. So, of course, on this show, we like to dress up. <laughs> Today, we're uh, dressing up in some animal outfits, and I am a... Bison Roo. Bison Roo. Yeah. So Perfect. In case you haven't seen this animal, uh, you are now going to see it in action. <laughs> Bison mixed with a kangaroo. All right. So. <laughs> well, I think I would live 
in this African savanna right here. This looks like a good one. But but the bat, you're usually supposed to be out at night. So what's going on? Are you are you evolving into a day creature? I'm really excited to be out right now. Um, so uh, yeah, I got my bat wings, which actually was really cool about bat wings is that they have the same number of digits that we have in our hands in their wings. So you can see their thumb, their pointer, their middle finger, their ring finger, and then their pinky back here. So they actually have like a hand inside of their inside of their wings. Now, she was telling me something really fascinating a little earlier, and I was pretty shocked by it. You are telling me how many mammals were currently on this planet right now, yes. and then something about bats. So share that with them, because I thought it was so fascinating. Yeah, so there are about 5,400 mammals species, and uh, of those, 1,200 of them are bats, which is an incredible amount of bats. <laughs> I thought there would be like millions of mammals on this planet. I mean, millions of different kinds, but only 5,400 and 1,200 bats? Yes. Okay, so how many bats can you name right now? Quit. Um, a vampire bat, um, a, f a friendly bat. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else know? Name bats. What bats do you guys Fruit know? Fruit bat. 1,200 of them. Yeah. What other bats do you guys know? Fruit yeah, fruit bat, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can name more than those two. <laughs> okay, so there's 1,200 bats, and she can only name two. <laughs> you need to study this I'm stuff. I'm a bat expert. I just <laughs> do really well at dressing up as bats. All right, okay, so what's the game now? I'm gonna. I, what kind of bat are you, at least? Are you going to be a... I have to be a vampire bat, because that's the only one I knew. Bat. Yeah. <laughs> She's a vampire bat right now. All right. Yeah, so this is an awesome space for people to just come and play. You can dress up in the... And then stand kind of in the murals. You'll see a lot of kids interacting with each other, um, which is really fun when two bison are using their horns like they're supposed to be used. Like yeah. They're used for fighting. So um, it's fun to see when, when kids and adults alike get involved. Okay. All right. Well, can you show us a little about what bats do? Bats are the only flying mammals, so I would fly. Yeah. Now you have to show me what a bison <laughs> okay, would so do. The cool thing about being a bison roo is I have size on me, uh, so I don't have to worry about predators, and I can also jump really high. So we're going to try to see if I can do this. <laughs> is, that how they, is that how... Well, I guess this is a bison roo, so I can make it however I want it to be. <laughs> And uh, I even carry my, my young right in my... In your pouch. Yeah, but it's, it hasn't been fully uh, developed yet, so <laughs> <laughs> give me some time. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so what happens... Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happens if all of a sudden we were to put ourselves in the ocean? Yeah, let's do it. Let's find out. <laughs> we're now... <laughs> Well, as a bat, I can fly above the ocean, I'm theoretically. Right yeah, well, I can't get up there. <laughs> I don't know what a bison is because you're really heavy. You have a lot of mass as a bison. But then, like, your kangaroo tail is really used for, like, helping you stand kind of as a third leg. You could, like, stand on the ocean floor. So I'm clearly a land animal. Yes. I'm an air animal. But your wings, they could, uh, yeah. I feel like they could swim, too. About bats swimming in the ocean next to a humpback whale, but <laughs> maybe in like a little thing of water. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this stress up's been a lot of fun. Awesome. We could do this for hours. There's so many different really options can. here. Really so if you guys ever want to have a fun dress up day, come to the Denver, Denver Museum Extreme Mammal Exhibition and you can dress up like different creatures. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on down. Okay. All right. So. Lori says that I should have jumped higher. Lori, I was not equipped with uh, hind legs that can do that. But thanks for pointing that out. Trying to, trying to take off my tail, but it think, I think it wants to stay. <laughs> we all have tailbones, you know. Can I hold this? All right, awesome. <laughs> all right, well, I might just have to... You might just have to wear it the whole rest of the time. This is awesome. <laughs> Do you have any facts for us in the meantime while I'm undressing here? Um, 
Let's see. Well, if you wanted to come out, check out uh, Extreme Mammals. It's open until January 8th. Um, and you can check out more information online at dmns.org. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Whew. All right. Let's check in with the comments here. Let's see what we got going here. Oh, oh okay. So Tinger said fruit bat. And she, Tinger also says I look like Freddie Flintstone. Thanks a lot, Tinger. Okay, what? So we're in the extreme populations part here. That's what the science says. Absolutely. So the extreme populations showcases marine mammals living in the ocean environment, how they can dive deep, how their red blood cells are different sizes, so they can conserve oxygen. Um, it also talks about isolation, um, island evolution. Um, what the North Pole used to look like and what it looks like now is a lot different. Um, so all the populations talks about uh, includes climates as well. Okay. The North Pole used to look different? Yes, absolutely. Let's go uh, and check it out. The North Pole's covered in ice. I don't know about you, but uh, yeah. how can anything live up there except, um, well, I think penguins live in Antarctica. Right. So polar bears live up in the north. Absolutely. I don't know what else lives up there, though. Seals, whales, um, Arctic foxes. Um, but this is actually a diorama of um, what it used to look like um, in the North Pole area. So in near El Ellesmere Island is what the Whoa. area is known as. So if you take a look, you can see it looks more like hippos. Wow. So what you guys are seeing right now is what the North Pole used to look like. And this was what... Maybe about in the 1970s? <laughs> yeah. Um, you more can like 50 million years ago. <laughs> I was thinking that, you know, recent climate changes really changed the ice caps, but I guess this was more than just 30 years ago. Yes, absolutely. So we know that, um, you know, evidence has shown us that it kind of went from the greenhouse that you see in this diorama to the North Pole we know today. Um, and that has a lot to do with um, the oxygen levels in our air and then also the, the carbon in our, our atmosphere. And as carbon becomes more and more, the climate changes. Yeah. You know, uh, not to sound like a downer about our planet right now, but I kind of would rather have this in the North Pole right now. Maybe take myself a little uh, Jurassic vacation. <laughs> what about you? You want to take a vacation up to the old North North Pole? I don't know. That guy looks pretty scary to me, so I'm not sure. I, I'd rather just uh, keep it nice and cold up there. Okay. Now. All right. Have you been in the North Pole yet? I have not. Okay. I have not. But so. sometimes That's interesting, though. You guys, I hope you guys got a close-up of that, yeah? So we'll tune in here. Lori says, you need to do another live at this museum she's really enjoying it oh cool uh then michael says is there a way to tell which of these mammals lived in colorado yeah absolutely so um back to those little flags um you'll notice them um on each of the exhibitions there may have a little colorado flag that says colorado mammal where there's a mammal that has lived here in the past so pre prehistoric or a current mammal like like um raccoons or something like that so you can see those all in this exhibition yeah, and we were looking at one of the skulls uh, just a little earlier, this mega syrupid, yeah. <laughs> and it was like this giant r ancient rhinoceros that happened to live in Colorado. So I was like telling you guys, like, if you see those in your backyard, call the museum. <laughs> Don't call us because you've gone through a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, there's no way I could find one of those right now? No, those are extinct right now. Okay, but if I maybe if I was digging real oh, deep maybe, in my backyard. Yeah. Maybe if you're practicing your paleontology, then yes, absolutely. You could maybe find one of those. So if you guys have any free time on your hands and you want to take out a shovel, maybe you'll find one. All right, what's next? Awesome. So we're kind of closing out the exhibition. It talks a little bit about um, extreme extinction. Um, on the brighter side, it talks about new discoveries of mammals, which we're discovering more often than you would think. Um, so... The most recent one uh, that we, we have here, showcased here, is in 1999, there was the, the striped rabbit that was discovered. And you would think, you know, we've seen it all, yeah. um, but we just, we haven't. We have to keep our eyes open, and, and good scientists are always um, open to new discoveries. And so um, we hope to have people come here and learn about that and learn how they can be kind of their own scientists in their own backyards. Yeah, Okay. So then, with all these new discoveries, 
What's your favorite mammal and favorite and recent discovery mammal? Um, the Olinguito, I believe, was discovered in South America. And if you don't know what that looks like, you got to look it up because they're so dang cute. Well, I don't know what it looks like. So do you have a picture of it, maybe? <laughs> I don't hear. This, um, but it's got a really fun orange color and, and yeah, just really cute faces. So you got to check them out. Nice. Okay, so what, what's this over here? This is Extreme Extinction. That does not look like a friendly cat. It, it probably wouldn't be. Uh, Look at that. I mean, do you think tigers have that big of of incisors? Is that what they'd be called, fangs? Yeah, they, they, they're not that big for modern-day tigers. I mean, that would just chaw your yes. bones apart. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so, actually, these are uh, showcasing extreme uh, uh, extinctions in that we, you know, we have to kind of learn from those animals that have died and, um, and what we can do to help that in the future. Um, but, you know, it's not all bad. We can really learn from extinction. And um, a lot of people have thoughts on people being on the planet and what that does for other mammals. Yeah. Um, but really, we have to think about all the good things that have come from us, right? All the technology that have come. The reason we're Facebook Live right now is because of the technology we've come up with. Um, you know, the reason why some of us might be clones. I mean, are you a clone? <laughs> I don't know. Ask my clone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's good stuff that, um, t that we can learn yeah. from extinction. And, and that's what we really want to think about is how do we learn from all, each and every one of these mammals. So. Now, how does the museum feel about the progress with genetic engineering and how they're actually trying, I don't know if you guys out there know about this, but they're actually trying to bring back some of the extinct species. I mean, we're talking full on Jurassic Park here, but with some of the recent extinctions like the dodo bird and the passenger pigeon, how does the museum feel about that? So um, we, okay, first of all, Jurassic Park would be just crazy. <laughs> um, at the museum here, though, we are really focused on um, what we know. So we know that we've gone through five mass extinctions so far. We're in our sixth mass extinction. So it's going on this rotation. We're in a ma an extinction right now? Yes. Yes. Shoot. So we, well, there have been other mass extinctions in the past. The last one, most notably, was the dinosaurs. 65 million years ago um so it's it's important to see what has come over the time over the those periods of time and you know we talked about that that display 50 million years ago and and as as time took course it was you know evolved into um the polar north pole that we know about that um so you know the as far as genetically modifying mammals to bring them back we also have to think about what that would do to our current ecosystem just the same if we were to totally deplete um uh, mosquitoes for example right um we have to think about that though they're annoying and they give us mosquito bites what would that do for their ecosystem the things that live above them and rely on them the things that live below them the plants um so it's really important to note what would come of bringing some species back to the species that currently live today. Okay, so we want to think about the repercussions of all of our actions because who knows, getting rid of all the mosquitoes might uh, bring something else forward that we might not want, like an invasion of more ants or I don't know what mosquitoes or mosquito hawks. <laughs> Those are the things. Okay, so uh, let's see. Someone says here, Corb says you're very smart. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and Christine says you're... Kristen says you're very knowledgeable. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Kristen. And she was worried that she didn't, <laughs> she wasn't going to be prepared for this, but she she has a lot of smarts. Yes, I agree. And then um, let's see here. And Michael says, if you visit the exhibition, you'll find specimens and replicas that have a Colorado flag on them, to which they're from the awesome state. I, yeah. Diego, I think you've been here before, <laughs> or or you were listening very well. Yes. <laughs> Either way, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, and this, what, what animal is that right behind us? This looks kind of interesting. Yeah. Two heads there? Or what's, oh, no, sorry. From the reflection, it looked like a two heads here. Rest in peace, Tasmanian wolf. Yes. Now, this one extinct in 1936. The last one died in a zoo. Yep. And it's native to, of course, Tasmania um, and... 
So that kind of brings back the idea of island evolution and what that animal has resources on Tasmania, the island of Tasmania, um, that might look different than uh, a full continent of North America. I'm really sad that this one went extinct because I actually would like this as a pet. I really like the markings. It reminds me of the cat I have right now. He is, he's kind of a black tiger. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's sad, though. So uh, I, what I was telling um, Neha a little about earlier was that um, I was doing some research on my own about just some of these recently extinct animals. And it's just fascinating to just to know how some of the animals just in the last 70 years, like this one here, are just disappearing, like the passenger pigeons. And they... You know, just over like a hundred years ago, the passenger pigeons. There, I was reading they had there was like three billion of them, three billion, and now there's zero. Mm -hmm. For it to go through such a mass population decline like that, mm -hmm. it's just it's. I don't even understand that. You know, and we have to think that you know here are some creatures on on our earth right now. Like, there's some endangered tiger. I mean, there's so many endangered animals, but there's like less than ten thousand of these, and and then one time there were three billion passenger pigeons. So. Yeah, I guess the point of what I'm trying to get at is it can happen overnight. Yeah. I mean, I think we need to, you know, just keep listening to our awesome scientists that care a lot about researching things like this. Um, and when a mammal is, specifically a mammal, is endangered, you know, what can we do as humans? Um, but again, we humans add a lot to the, the quality of life currently. And so we have to think about it in a positive way as well. Like we're always learning yeah. um, and we're always developing too. So that has to be really constant for sure. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys out there had a great time. We're going to see if there's any last minute question, questions. But Christian says, Kristen says, rest in peace, passenger pigeons. And Karen says, you're well-spoken and smart. Yeah. So, well, before you go, why don't you uh, tell us just real quick kind of what got you involved in being here today and uh, how we can learn more about what you do and what the museum does. Yeah, so I'm one of the program specialists for the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and I uh, got involved with the museum about a year and a half ago. Um, I walked through the doors and just fell in love with this place and had to work here. Um, so I... Uh, I love animals, which is why I wanted to be a part of this particular exhibition. Um, but there are so many magical things about the museum as a whole that, you know, you just can't see in a day. Um, so I love when guests come back, they bring their own ideas, they come talk to you about what they know and what they've learned from being at the museum. And that's always really fun. Um, I love people. I love learning. I love science. And so I think this is just the perfect spot for me. Um, but yeah, you can come visit Extreme Mammals, um, dress up like a bison roo um, <laughs> or be a fruit bat which is the, or the uh, vampire bat the only bat I knew um, and uh, and come check us out um, through January 8th at extreme mammals at dmns.org you can find out more information cool well, thank you so much for Thanks, showing JJ. us around yeah. well guys thank you guys for tuning in again for a wonderful episode if you'd like to see more of the past episodes you can go to facebook.com slash JJ Yosh and this is a uh, JJ signing out at Denver, Colorado at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. See you guys next week.